I'm Thomas Hollywood Henderson, former linebacker in the National Football League for the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm also a recovering drug addict. I've been sober 36 years and counting. My name is James William, and I've been a, I've been an addict for, from 1990 to 1995, and I've been recovered from that since 1998 until 2020. I'm Michael. Um, started using when I was like 16 years old and um, used till I was 46 and uh, been clean now, uh, going on 14 years and three months. I grew up really dirt poor. Um, in Austin, Texas. I was my stepfather's stepson. My mom and dad uh, drank every weekend, Friday and Saturday nights. It was, uh, you know, like Dodge City. And so I grew up in a alcohol-filled home growing up. Um, and I think that had an effect on me, but I didn't know it until much later in life. Um, my mother shot my father in front of me. She was drunk and he was drunk and uh, there was violence. My father would black my mother's eyes uh, in front of us kids. I was there when she got stomped and beat. I was there when she was naked in the yard. Um, so certain things that, that happen to kids um, are devastating. I didn't meet my real father until I was 21 years old and the Dallas Cowboys had drafted me. Then here comes this guy to New York going, my son! What got me in or what allowed me to get stupid with the volume of drinking, the volume of smoking, the volume of cocaine and quaaludes and the rest, is that um, you see your friends, you see your neighbors, you see your people you look up to, uh, you see people you aspire to be doing it. So that's a green light for you to participate as well. Um, so I was always something bad going to happen. And so football is was such a small part of my life, but it also emulated the violence that I grew up with and saw in my own house. Um, my years in the National Football League were filled with uh, injuries, both large and small. Uh, there were opioids being passed out like chiclets. Um, took two black mollies before every football game I played in was a Dallas Cowboy. You know, just massive amphetamine. You know, go to the, to the field like, who? What? So in the mid-70s, I'm with the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm hanging around with Richard Pryor and Marvin Gaye, both deceased, buddies of mine. So Hollywood was because I hung out in Los Angeles in the off season. I was dating one of the Pointer sisters, a beautiful woman, and hanging out with, uh, with the stars. You know, I mean, Richard Pryor? You know, I'd come in with a little bag of cocaine. He'd come out with a goddamn brick a kilo of goddamn cocaine. You know, I was always getting a you know quarter, eight ball. You know, but I saw this guy buying kilos, so I started buying four or five ounces at a time, so I didn't have to go look for it. So yeah, in a way that uh, that it, that really screwed me up because the more I had, the more I did. I started with uh, my friends in high school. We'd drink our beers, and our parents would uh, be out on Friday and Saturday night and stay busy, and they wouldn't really tend to us or monitor us much. And 
we'd sneak beers and uh, go in garages and take beers from other people's garages and stuff and just playing around and then slowly started smoking some pot and um, you know we weren't being supervised that much so we were able to do things and we uh, got in slowly got into trouble it's a full-time job I mean staying high is is is, is never-ending being an addict, I lost many, many opportunities. That, uh, that today, my ambition I have today, if I had one, you know, I was younger in my 20s, um, you know, I had no focus and I didn't have uh, any goals at that time. It was just, uh, I had no responsibilities. My, my father enabled me to the extreme, bought me a house uh, after I went to treatment. Last day of using, I was uh, going to, uh, Walk, decided to go to a detox on my own and I was using crack cocaine and uh, drinking alcohol at a Gatorade bottle walking into the uh, detox center and as I was checking in they asked me uh, when's the last time I drank I unscrewed the Gatorade bottle full of Cisco and drank the last sip and I threw it across the room and it landed in the trash can by accident I don't know how it did but it did and they said what was that and I said that was Cisco that was my last drink uh, you know, they wanted to take my blood pressure and they, the woman said, you can't stay here, you need to go to the hospital right now. And I dropped dead right there, I believe. I woke up in an ambulance with IVs in my both hands, EKGs up in my body. And that's what it took me for the last day of my using. It was a God thing I was there at the right moment because I dropped out and I, if I was anywhere else, I don't know where I'd be today. When I was in my addiction, what really kept me in, everybody around me was doing the same thing. <laughs> I was addicted to crack cocaine. When I started with crack, it was because of my brother had died in 1985, and I took his death pretty hard. Well, the thing that I'm really ashamed of is the time when, uh, I, when my wife and son that when I was out there on crack cocaine, I came home one day and I took the TV to go sell it, and took the phone to go sell it. And when I look back at that, man, I was a hurting thing to, to me inside. It just tear me up. And then when I used to go on my wife's job, and I look back how embarrassed I made her, you know, and then her co-workers looked down on her, her, and she was a strong woman. Thank God for a strong woman. Thank God for that she was there waiting for me when I used to write letters and wanted to get back with her. I'd write letters and, and ask her, told her I was clean. I didn't have to tell her that I was clean. I had to show her. So I had to walk that walk. When I got out, I walked that walk. When I got out, I started being the man I supposed to be for her, my wife and family. One day when I was in prison during that time, that I was shaving and I looked in the mirror and I said, that the enemy right there. I was talking about myself. When I really stopped being in denial, it's the, the time when I was in prison. That's why I say the 24 months that I did, a little over 24 months that I did was the best 24 months of my life. I started writing my wife when I was in prison to let her know that, you know, I'm sorry. I wrote her a forgiveness letter. I wrote my son a forgiveness letter. I wrote my cousin a forgiveness letter. These people that I stole from, asked them to forgive me. With the beautiful wife that I have and the family that I have, I would have never started that addiction, never got started with any, any crack cocaine or alcohol or anything. But thanks be to God, when you look at the pictures of my wife and myself and my family, only God can do that. You can get out of your addiction as long as you have a mind to do it. And when you have a mind to do it and be sincere about it, you can do it. I got clean finally when I was 46 years old and um, I'm 59 today. What got me out was um, I was using for 20 some odd years and I was just getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was going to the meetings, coming in and out of the meetings. I'd stay clean three, four, five months and go back out, beat myself up, lose a lot of weight. I'd get clean again. 
um, put on some weight. I like to go to the gym and work out and stuff. I put some size on and two or three months later, I, I just go out and use and I get skinny and I was beating myself up and it was just a, a life of misery. Well, at the time, uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time, we were using really hard at that, that right before I quit, or we were together for maybe a year and a half or so. And we were using to, you know, to using nonstop. And um, I, I had went to the detox and, just, and I quit. And um, she's decided, she decided to keep using for, and she called me a month later and uh, I, she said she needed some help, and I told her that if I can get her some help, would she take it? She said yes, and so I called a uh, rehab I knew at the top of my head and asked them if they had a bed available for a woman. They said, can you have her here at nine in the morning? And that never happens. I had her there at nine in the morning, and uh, she's been clean ever since then, and she's my wife today. We got married last year, and uh, it's been uh, 14 years coming in two months. How did I get out? Well, I'll tell you a story. And uh, this is probably the most important story I'll ever tell you. There was a guy named Tom. He was from Boston. We were roommates in 1983 when I went to rehab in Southern California. I was there coming out of detox, meeting people in treatment who had the same sort of problems I had. So, you know, you sort of pair up and buddy up. And so they let us go down to a store to get Snickers bar and a Dr. Pepper and a Coke or whatever you wanted. And I went to the store one night with this guy. I got a Snickers bar and a Dr. Pepper. He got a pint of vodka. On the way back, I didn't say anything to him. I didn't confront him. I didn't question him. I just was like, whoa. He drank that whole pint in two blocks. I saw the disease eye to eye. And I didn't want to be like that anymore. He's dead. That buddy who showed me the disease of alcoholism and addiction is dead. Sobriety is an option. And a sober life is damn fun. It's just the joy of living um, present. Um, noticing flowers and sunrises and sunsets and paying attention and being healthy. What I would say to young men and women, um, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, um, you may see your parents drinking beer and wine, whiskey, scotch, vodka. Um, just know those are very potent things. Those are things you shouldn't touch or sneak or play around with. I wish I had never drank a beer. <laughs>